you actually restarted the game after that good ending you chose. That's right. <sighs> Why? Why do you want a second chance after successfully finishing something? Because sometimes it's not Why all there is to it. Attempt it again. Do you want to, I don't know, touch the other buttons? See what would happen if you did. Or maybe find some hidden secret or easter egg. Something like that. Or maybe just try that bad ending you saw. Hmm. Honestly, I don't know. I wouldn't recommend trying this game again. Why would you anyway? Do you really have that much time to waste? Don't you have anything better to do? <laughs> Not well, likely. Do you really want to know what happens if you take that bad ending? Once again, I would not recommend it. It's definitely not worth it. A very subtle commentary. Welcome back. And now it's time for the second leg of our journey. This is the hipster snack, and I want to start with, uh, there's no other way to say it, just, like, thank you. <laughs> the massive, massive outpouring, um, that came in just, like, less than 24 hours even. Like, the video hasn't even been up 24 hours as of this recording, but the way you guys... I had a lot of people reach out, and everyone was just kind of like, Snack, are you okay? <laughs> um, it meant a lot, the world to me. Um, just thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, but we're not done. We're not done with this game. Oh, no. All Boom. right. Yeah, you heard me. Persistent, aren't you? Some choices have consequences. It's almost like that's a subtle warning about something. Can't imagine what that would be. Hello. <coughs> Hello. No. <coughs> Hello. Yeah. Hi. Um, Hello, new player. Welcome to this experience, and thank you very much <laughs> no, for joining it. No, I'm not. It. Uh, no, that's, that's too much. Um, uh, hello. Thank you very much for downloading this. Uh, oh, and, uh, best of luck, I guess. And finally, welcome! Some very subtle changes, but changes nonetheless. Yep. That's... that's the game. We all know that's Why not true. Still here? Exactly. There's reasons. This, this, is, this is the game. Yep. yep. Just get some companies, particles, get a text, in a room, dark room, dramatic. And that's about it. Just feel free to leave. You know that doesn't um, work in you, right? Bye. There's nothing that, that to it. Thank you very much for coming. Bye. Who okay. cares? Well, I care. So this intro bit is... So, you're either very patient, which would be a good thing, or very persistent, which I mm -hmm. think would be a good thing too, or very stupid, which yep. is less of a good thing, or you are just plain annoying. Yep. Because it's not hard to press Alt F4 and just leave the game, you know? Um, so I'm... This opening bit is very much in the same what vein as the first, but oh, it's also very clear that things Maybe are changing. Just add a door there. Yeah, just, just right there. Just take that door, and you should be able to leave the game. Thank you very much. Of course, we all know how this goes. Yeah, 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 you... that's... That, the door. Yeah, that door. Yeah. Just, uh, just open the door. Patience. Once it's open, it, it will close again, and you, you win. You can actually dash. Yeah, Generally, I, I didn't in the first run. Uh, yeah, and you this know, looks like this might be a room. Again, right? just it's not. F. It's a wall. And it should open. Or maybe it was E. 
Uh, it depends on the game. I don't remember what it, what action key I said. Um, um, maybe it's just click, or maybe maybe it's a trigger. Maybe maybe you can just step step out. Yeah, try stepping out again nope. from the door, and try try none of that try works. Try coming again towards the door. Maybe it will open. No. Nope. No. 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 Uh, um, I I tried to open from my end. Just just a sec. All right. <laughs> um, welcome again. <laughs> I I thought you left. Um, didn't you go through the exit portal? Ah, oh, yes, you did. <laughs> um, why are you still here then? Oh, that's so weird. Very um, weird. Um, tell you what. Um, I'm gonna just make another door Ooh. behind you. Um, just go through it and it should exit your game. <laughs> you know the just drill. Behind you. Here, enter the door. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the door. Yeah, just just go through it. Uh, just wait a sec. See, I'd actually forgotten I could jump up until I got to the sewer area. So, yeah. uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry about that too. <laughs> I just just wanted to try that out. I'm sure you didn't fall for it, but I just had to try. Um, now. Now. Uh, actually, I'm a bit buzzy, mm -hmm. so I will just ask you not to touch anything and just stay calm. Stay here, and I'll be right back. Again, we could wait, but... Well, I've already demoed that, so let's just uh, get to it. So, of course, you had to press that button. Uh, well, I mean, I think anyone will... Help is not so always I ringing. Um, well, since you're here Why now, replay uh, the scheme? So this is a word he I doesn't work know. Uh, as you can see, it's far the from joys far of wasting far. time. I'm a pro at uh, that. Maybe you can give me your opinion on this. Bar Once again, door. going through these exit doors loops you out to the other side uh, yeah. of the factory the floor. We are you not the same again. entity. Almost as though someone else is trying to send me a message. Only I know. Ah, uh, that bloom is, uh, something fierce now. Oh. Um, okay, it's not always easy to get through. So this one was made for some kind of underwater level. I never finished it. You had a uh, chance to jump, I think. I mean, I think it's pretty, but... There's actually an easter egg if you yeah, get here in the first it. run and leap off what the platform. There's a Steam achievement. And he will berate you for immediately doing that as your first course of action. difficult to be honest when you only give someone one choice. But then again, I think a lot of things should take that advice to heart. So, now that we are friends and all, I just want to play a little game with you. City's See, a little there's more a park inviting. In and I need you to go there and buy me a drink. Just try to avoid wasn't other really people. really a game, was it? Well, that depends on your definition. Nothing to fear. Just say hi. They don't bite. I can hear them.
Getting close to them causes the screen to turn red. And of course, in proper fashion, they'll always keep eye on you, much the same as the cameras do. Margaret's on the left, go buy stuff. Easy. The messages around here are all the same. The only difference is I don't believe that a foe exit will actually spawn in this go around. Got time to waste, it seems. As someone who despises large crowds, this hits home with me. But here's the thing, it's a very mild anxiety for me. If stuck in a public situation or forced to even do public speaking, I usually do pretty okay, all things considered. Congratulations! Now, if everyone was to surround me very aggressively, I might handle that a little less well. Still going? Sure am. I must admit, you have determination. I do, and I'm not going to make a stupid meme about it either. Even though... Nothing you can do will change a thing. Oh, well, I'm not so sure about that, actually. Isn't there more to this <laughs> than a simple conversation? doing. Once again, that last option is missing. But there's something to be taken away from this, and I mean, really, this conversation is one that we have almost every day. Like, if you go to work or school, everyone's gonna be like, hey, you know, good morning, how you doing, how are things going, and, and you're expected, almost by just, like, reflex. That your answer is, is, hey, I'm fine, I'm doing good. And it's just, that's what you're expected to, to do and say, right? What are you doing here? And even, even when we're frustrated and, and when we're mad or having a bad day or genuinely suffering, suffering from something more severe, There, there were days where... It's not something I'm proud to admit, but there were days where I'm just like... I'm just kind of numb to life, and, and even the idea of like something cataclysmic happening to me didn't really shake me out of it. Now, the idea of someone else hurting, someone else suffering... That was upsetting. That, that would actually take me out of this mindset. Um... But that's just because I happen to be among the few who are fortunate enough to have a really amazing family and, and really awesome friends. Um, but I totally get why someone would get to that point and not even want to get out of bed in the morning, you know? Tell me more. Let me out. In this bit here... I think one of the major takeaways here is this is essentially a very flirtatious response. At least the green ones are. Uh, essentially, we're, we're trying to ask her out. But it's like... Romance is not a substitute for mental health treatment and evaluation. And there's a lot of pop culture that will beg to differ. Um, it's why if I ever had kids, I would really genuinely not let them watch things like Beauty and the Beast that glorify essentially things like Stockholm Syndrome, give people the impression that, oh, true love will just magically make all the issues go away, because that's not how this works. Thankfully, I've never tried to substitute a relationship for legitimate medical concern. Never gone down that road, but... Pop culture sure makes hey, it look tempting, really, doesn't it? Hey, that was some nice conversation you had there. Those very, are some very big cameras. Very meaningful, you know. 
want something. Did that wall just get higher. I had choices over already. It was, I think, it was the best answers to each question. Gotcha. Uh, just, just wait a minute. Now once again, I didn't forget you, Snake. You are not alone. We don't have much time. Follow. And once again, we have our very strong light motif. One of the oldest dichotomies in human fiction But a very evocative one at the same time. Hope. There were times where it felt like that's literally all I had. Was I was just clinging to, hey, maybe something will change, maybe status quo will will suddenly alter. And that's a dangerous kind of hope to, to cling to, um, empty prayer, uh, because just I, I just want this problem to go away. I don't want to have to deal with it, but very rarely do we have solutions where, well, the answer is anything but dealing with it, meeting it head on. There's really nothing else for it, right? You notice I'm checking behind me a lot. It's because uh, this run actually has a lot of stuff that will appear behind you that wasn't there in the first run. You've done this before, right? Yeah, more than I uh, care to admit. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's only because I like this game a lot. And... Whoops. Got a little off my center there. Now, in terms of, of how I'm doing, because a lot of people have asked, um, it's a mixed bag. It, things are still tough. But getting the chance to talk about it like this has been incredibly therapeutic. And it doesn't matter if one person listens, do not despair. If one person listens or if a million people listen, it's all kind of the same to me because it's finally had the chance to say what's been on my mind for for a while now. And yeah, the, the situation's still a little tumultuous. Keep going. But that's, that's exactly it. This is a really uh, good metaphor, actually, because it's... I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's going to happen next. And sometimes there is an unexpected curve. But I have to keep moving forward. I can't stop. It's just stopping doesn't get me anywhere. And so for, for those who have asked, I'm, I'm okay. I'm really okay. I'm not going to... I'm not going to do anything rash, I promise. Believe in the light. That's all I can do. Um, and thankfully I have a lot of light in my life. Um, like I mentioned before, my, my friends, I have a great family. Um, and you guys at home watching me, supporting me, even... Even if I don't know you specifically, or, or like a personally one-on-one, -on -one, your watching uh, means the world. That's specifically because I know that maybe you can take to heart part of what I've experienced, and, and part of what I've felt, and some of the challenges, and, and dealing with the unexpected, like I talked about in episode one, um, and take that and apply it to your own life. Uh, incoming jump scare warning, I'm pretty sure. 
buttons and to say that, so... Yep. Never stop. Keep going. And that's... That's the moral of the story, right? You know, you just... Now, I didn't really comment very much on these hallways, but... Honestly, I, I think the idea here is, well, it can be hard to tell where we're going in life. And there's all these doors, right? And any one of them could lead somewhere to an encounter, a new, new job, a new opportunity, a new risk. Um, and maybe it'll be something bad. And then all these eyes, I think they're eyes, passing by. They look like eyes to me, so that's what I'm going with here. These are the, the various encounters, I think, that we'll have. Maybe they'll be good, maybe they'll be bad, but... But the important thing is that we have them. That we have those encounters. And what does she represent? This is something I talked about a bit in my review, and, and since this bit's a little quiet, I'll tell you a bit about how my first impressions of the game went. It didn't take long at all, uh, once Sir Hyan quit yanking my chain about asking him to buy buy me a drink, for, for me to buy him a drink, rather. Um, it seemed almost the, an analogy of a red-eyed man who wished harm upon the player, and a blue-eyed woman who wanted to see them be safe and to get to the light, to get to a place of safety and serenity. And everything in between, the different things that you see and hear and experience, are, are just the small steps necessary, because it, you, don't, you don't hit rock bottom and then take one step and bam, magically everything is just fine and everything is just better and works itself out. It's a lot of steps. And generally, I'm, I'm one of those people who's actually kind of down on walking simulators. Because um, they don't really... And a lot of the time, they're, they're really pretentious, which doesn't help their case. But a, a lot of the time, is it feels very empty, very hollow. Uh, and even attempts of using storytelling in that method, um, it's just a visual novel, but with more steps. Literal steps. Snack, you still persist, even in the stream. You still go always forward. And so I shall. This area is called Poem. And I think this is something Sir Hyan wrote so that we could take a little something away from what he was thinking and feeling. And I'll be honest, uh, the meaning of this chapter eludes me. I'm going to let you guys draw your own conclusions. But... To give you guys some, some idea... Uh, this year has been really hard, but like I said, it hasn't been without its upsides. I've learned a lot, I've experienced a lot, and... Uh, I, I've even had the benefit of having things like I got to do a crossover with Gen Leader Ed, uh, and it was great. That, that entire experience was just amazing, uh, and getting to work with him. He's an awesome guy, and I count him among a, a personal friend of mine. And thanks to him, I've discovered some really amazing monster games. And... It would be really cool if I had some other crossovers in the future. I, I don't really have anyone in mind, um, but I hope it happens. That'd be really fun. Very different. You get uh, different creators' takes on a similar concept. And... Not to say it hasn't been tough. I just, I don't want you guys to get the impression that it's just everything has been terrible. Because um, there's more to the story than that. 
Now, obviously, I, I don't care to go too much into depth. First off, um, I have made it a point to not, you know, overshare. <laughs> I, I don't think that's good form. And odds are good you guys don't care about the minutia so much as the broad strokes. It's important to know that I didn't just neglect myself when I was at my lowest point either. I actually had help, and I had a really good support base during that time. So, so to answer a lot of the questions, yes, uh, I am all right. One of the interesting mechanics in this game is your walking speed changes depending on context. So as you're going through the poem, your body is actually moving at a pace. Even if you're holding, you know, shift W the entire time, you're always moving at the appropriate speed. But whereas when you're on the school campus level, you can actually run really, really fast. Things like that. Oh boy, so I need for just a few minutes, and uh, that's where I find you. In yep. My past, in my memories. It's a little unclear <laughs> what he means by that. Oh, Suppose we're just supposed to draw our own conclusions. You have now. You've gone way too far. Now, I don't really get the takeaway that in this context the narrator is really an antagonist. I get the impression more he's an unwillful companion. <laughs> someone who's felt the same oh, way as the player. And has kind of no choice but to tag along due that to the player's so persistence. <laughs> Well, you know what? I'm just gonna let you be, and... Well... Have fun! I always got the impression Actually, that he was as much of a... It's, it's gonna be a lot easier. As much as someone who's being dragged through this, just as much as the player's <laughs> own personal experiences. I'm terribly sorry about that. Um, well, I just let you explore, have fun... No matter what you try, life still goes on. I love it when people try to find Easter eggs. Uh, there's quite a few peppered throughout this game. Most of which are tied to certain Steam achievements, which I have all but one. And I will save it till the very end, uh, which one I do not have. We're following the light. Because that is all we can do. Okay, this is going to be weird, but I have a slight phobia associated with elevators, and it's not the idea that the elevator will fall or the security wire will break. This is a new right? <laughs> um, more, it's like, it's that social anxiety I was talking about before. Uh, some rando gets on the elevator with you, and you're just kind of stuck in close proximity with them. So it's like, do I say something? Do I not say something? Just keep my mouth shut? I used to work in a big office building, so this happened a lot. And I got really good at making small talk with the people who were more talkative. And then when the whole uh, lockdown situation started, well, we were, like, ordered to stay to four people or less in an elevator for all the good that does. 
it was just, it was more awkward than anything because like they had these footprints in each corner of the elevator. It's like, oh yeah, that's super helpful. Great, thanks. Can't even push my floor button. The clocks, I think, are probably one of the most on the nose metaphors in the game. Funny enough, if you actually approach these guys really quickly, sometimes you can get the clock stuck. Ah, I got it. I had it there for a second, so you got to see what I was talking about. Hmm. I take offense at three of the four of these. And the clocks, yes. You are not a bad person. You know, that's... A simple message, oh, yeah, this is but it's one that before, right? a lot of people, I think, need to hear. In truth, we're either our and... best allies or our worst enemies, and a lot of the time I really am that latter one. As the blue-eyed woman. I can't tell if she's facing forward or attempting to look at me. I'm gonna say, I think this is one of those moments where you're really supposed to take the opposite impression from these. Because I, I cannot think of a single situation where ignorance really is best. I mean, there might be really niche, stupid situations where ignorance is best, like... That, bro, I don't want to know that you just picked your nose. Kind of ignorance. I think, broadly speaking, knowing is better. Literally nothing special about this scene. Yeah, I don't think I have to push too hard to explain why I feel this scene's very significant. And uh, just about everything in this game has a meaning. The clocks, like I said, being chief among them. I mean, time itself is is a precious commodity. Wouldn't you agree, Snack? Hello again. Where are you really, deep inside? Is this game about you, or are you projecting yourself in it? That's a fair question, actually. This entire story can be interpreted multiple ways, and I've heard some really amazing theories about it. Um, leave yours down in the comments. I, I genuinely want to hear it. Once again, jump scare incoming. <laughs> Same messages as before. One of the things that I think is very striking about this is that's very clearly supposed to be my computer setup, that this is supposed to be me very much in the middle of all this, and the way that others are, are viewing both as a means to judge and also as a means of, well, helping. The blue-eyed woman's in, uh, uh, efforts to help are, are very obvious, as we saw in the first run. And we'll see again as we move on. The thing is, when people are scared and stressed and frustrated, the default reaction is, leave me alone. I'm really bad about that myself. Putting the shield up to my problems is my chief means of coping. But at the same time, the impenetrable castle that cannot be assailed from the outside is also destined to be filled with... A kingdom of just a king, an army of a single general. No one can help you either. Interesting. This conversation, and precisely who we're talking about in this context, is left deliberately vague. And again, it's, it's going to depend on what you end up taking away from the entire thing. Is the blue-eyed woman trying to save me, or am I trying to save her? Or is it both? Maybe we're all just so fundamentally Wait, broken what? that that's <laughs> literally we all we can do, is just Wait, reach out for one another. You already know what they all are, don't you? The one you're actually most liable to miss is this one behind you. 
Now, as you see, not only do we move at a very brisk pace, but we no longer have need of a flashlight. Now, we will not drown. Despite the helpful advice, uh, you cannot drown here. Because that's not the point of this particular submersion. It's more a feeling, really, more than anything. No, no, you know there's nothing over there. Why persist? I told you before, there's nothing here. Just empty space. Even this text is still here to warn you. Are you lost? Coming over this way is just a Steam achievement. But I also wanted to show there's nothing here. Why do you look for meaning? See? Nothing here. Absolutely nothing. And while that's true, that is true. Um, I wanted to show this off a bit because, again, this is one of those areas that is completely different in terms of its visual representation in your first run and in your second run. Now I'm just going to haul on back. I'm trying to find the sewer. Just again, that one's the easiest to overlook and it's the hardest to find from a distance in particular, because you don't have the benefit of it being black as pitch. Isn't it better like this? Which actually kind of almost implies that there's something sinister about the fact that the lights are all on. Why do I keep going? Well, curiosity is definitely a part of it. And second, I've let down a lot of people. A lot of people would be hurt if I just gave up. And that's why, even when the chips are down and things aren't so great, I find a way to keep moving forward. Soccer ball. I'll be honest, I'm not much of a sports guy. P.E. was uh, usually the class I just got kind of bullied in. Yep. What a shock, right? The nerd got bullied in school. What, what are the odds? What a unique and uh, never-before-told story. Now, the sports that I'm good at, it's going to be limited to uh, volleyball and bowling. <laughs> uh, that was fun. As you see, our takeaway this time very different. We have a very natural ambience going on here. Now, this clock, I believe, is actually in a different location. I don't think it spawns precisely where it did in the nighttime. It was here at the bed. Things do change, and we're powerless in the face of change. He raises a fair point. And that can be really terrifying sometimes. Things will change, and sometimes they change for the better, and sometimes they change for the worse. But not everything stays forever lost. I think that's really important really important takeaway here is that change is really the only thing that's permanent in life. And that can be scary. Sometimes. In light of some circumstances, I think change can actually be viewed as a welcome companion. It's a little hard to be scared when I hear birds chirping. The only thing it makes me afraid of is that I'm going to have to wash my car soon.
Though, admittedly, that self-same defense mechanism can come back to bite me. I love to make people laugh, so I've learned to kind of embrace self-effacing humor. And I think generally that's okay, but that doesn't change the fact that It's probably not healthy to make fun of yourself all the time. What's the point, huh? Well, I don't think there's a universal answer for that. I think that's something that everyone kind of has to, to make their own, their own answer. And it's not going to be applied across the board. For me, my friends and my family are the obvious ones, but my channel is a big part of it. I want to entertain you guys. And it's okay if my channel never breaks 10 trillion subs or, or whatever. Oh yeah. Nice try. Yeah, that's the one I accidentally skipped by uh, backing up into it last time. But, that's just it. Like, everyone's answer is going to vary. And, wanting to make people happy has just always kind of been a thing of mine. And if I'm able to make people laugh or entertain people well then it's time well spent and even if I make mistakes along the way like accidentally deleting my own audio track while doing a let's play and people having to awkwardly listen to Yutaku carry the video for me <laughs> it's a lesson for later and and the fact that you guys have been so incredibly gracious to me as I've learned, like, how to make these videos. Figuring out certain things, um, like, I'll give you a specific example, actually, was learning to zoom in the camera. I didn't know how to do that for a long time. And the thing that actually taught me how to do it was when I was doing my uh, review of Monster Rancher 3. <laughs> uh, learning to do that and, and like zoom in on things is because I wanted to accentuate my frustration. Uh, but it actually taught me like how to get better at making these videos. So, happy accident? It's a trick I've used on numerous occasions. And the really, really tough... Uh, takeaway lesson was the animation that was ultimately used in the April Fool's episodes. And again, we get that real, real tense sting again. Um, but, yeah. It's still generally the same layout. Yeah, and uh, actually when it's light, you actually get the benefit of being able to look up and kind of see this a bit better, which you couldn't before. That motivates you. I don't know, the fact that I put out a really dark, contemplative video and several of my friends started IMing me to make sure I was okay, and I mean, <laughs> that's pretty good motivation, I think. How do you keep going? I choose to. That, that, that sounds weird, but it's like, I choose to continue pushing forward. And ultimately, that, that's the crux of it, right? It's like, the problem is the choices you make. Why do you do this? Well, again, I have 600 very good reasons why I should. And I could get frustrated and Say, I, I'm terrible at YouTube and I should just delete my channel. I'm not going to do that, by the way. But, I can yell and rage and scream at the heavens and I'm right, but it won't do any good. The only thing that will was to keep moving forward, to keep trying. Creation is the goal of all life. 
And that is there specifically because of the choices I made in the first run. Unfortunately, I'm kind of stuck. Follow your own pace. Listen to the light. You can do this. As you see, the nature of this puzzle is a little bit different now. It's like staring off into space. Um, I actually want to mention kind of a strange story. Uh, when I was young, I actually went on a retreat uh, with my church. And I went up into the Appalachian Mountains, um, pretty high up, much higher than, than where I actually lived. And let me tell you, the night sky was so beautiful. It was this inky, misty purple. And you could see shooting stars all over the place. It wasn't rare at all to see them. I don't remember like too much of what happened on that trip, but I remember that night sky. You guys don't know how good of an advice that actually is. If you're frustrated or, or scared or angry, stop and take a deep breath again. You can do this. You're almost there. This gives you a, a better idea of some of the different routes you can take. I am proud of you. I really am. I just kind of want to take this in for a second. See, for lots of different reasons, I don't make it a point to bring up my family too, too often. Um... Like I said, I, I have a really good one. And I grew up hearing these words a lot. But that doesn't stop them from having a profound effect. If people took the time to positively affirm other people a little more often, maybe it wouldn't be viewed as... I don't know. I guess it's kind of like uncool to be overly positive or to, to go out of your way to praise people a whole lot. But I try to. I try to tell people right, to do this again. I don't know, this is probably one of the more stressful legs of the game. Is this a dream? Aren't dreams simple mind construct? Well, that depends on who you ask. Safe place. Who lives here? That's a good question. Such an empty house. Could this be a test house? Ah, oh, there it is. Yep. Uh, I took the entire shelf with me. I am an overachiever par excellence. Yep, all that text goes away, which is a little unfortunate. I didn't get the chance to read it all. But that's okay. Ah, uh, we know the drill, right? Mogwai over here. I suppose the real question is, what do you do in the face of overwhelming fear and apprehension? Well, what else have you got to lose at that point but to Look at it head on. Gotta go.
Oof. Still got that concerningly close. Ah. Uh, do what you remember uh, me? Of course I do. This is one of the most astoundingly frustrating moments in all of gaming. I want nothing more than to push that button and talk to her. Why won't you listen? Because one of the things that I meant to say last time and and guess I blanked. I just wanted to have you. If you're suffering, if you're hurting, the people who love you just want to, to know. Me. They want to know what's going on in your head. I can't stay here much longer. Because they want nothing more than to reach out and help you. And it can be paralyzing because, like Please I said... make the right choice. It can be so frustrating a feeling. Because for me, it's like... Some things do have a meaning. Came out into the hallway to see me. For me, it feels like I'm just whining. If I go to someone and I'm like, hey, dude, I'm really down today. In my head, it's like, I am literally just wasting their time. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing anything. I'm just complaining about my problems. I'm not bringing a solution to the table, as it were. More stars. Ah, very funny. We've already had that joke. Thank you. My purpose in life. Now, we really get to pick two of these. And so... I guess... I will pick knowledge this time. I like learning. Well, I mean... To control a crushing wall is a uh, feat of strength I'm not prepared to execute. Some choices allow no comeback. And here we are at a familiar stage dressing. That little egg is anything but something that symbolizes life. As we well know now, at least. But it raises a fair point. Do it for real time. Well, maybe find one day and yet fall the next. You can still change. That's the danger of it, isn't it? Like, everything's going fine, or at least it seems that way, and... All it takes is one domino to fall. But people are going to make mistakes. We're all going to have regrets. And believe me, I have plenty. Like, I regret not being the hipster snack ten years ago when I first had the opportunity. Who knows where I might be now if I had actually stopped being my own enemy and just embraced it. I'll always be there for you. The danger of things like this is that it's a permanent solution to temporary problems. And while it might seem like your only option, it very rarely is. And really, what's the harm in picking up the phone, anyway? What's the worst they can possibly tell you if you already feel that low to begin with?
Why do you persist? There is no escape. I will make you fall. Nobody cares about you. You will fall again. Nobody needs you. I will always be there. You are alone. You cannot get rid of me. Nobody escapes me. No one will help you. I shall succeed. You are mine. And you shall fall again. Free yourself. Go back. And this is how it feels. Right? When you get to that lowest point, this is what this choice actually feels like. Don't listen. Keep going. Everyone will leave you. Do not look back. Whoops. <laughs> I live within you. I am your shadow. I am all you have left. Everyone will leave you. We are bound together, light and darkness. This is what it really feels like when you get to that point. The choice is always there. It's always, like, dangling in front of you. But when you're really fighting through the worst of it, the lowest of the low, reaching out can be tough. No one escapes death. Those are your options. What do you do? This is just me speaking, but pushing ahead, even having the smallest chance of turning the situation around, that's enough, isn't it? Let me just pause here for a second. In all seriousness, like, I have been very low to the point where those thoughts crossed my mind. But some other thought would cross my mind at the same time. Think about the people who would hurt the most if something were to happen to you. There's Cog, who I've known since 7th grade. Dutaku, who I met in ninth grade. Clockwork, who's a more recent friendship. The Lone Ranger, who I've met five or six years ago now. Those people will always hurt if you are hurt. Don't let permanent solutions be the choice you make for temporary problems. It gets better. Trust me, I would know. I'm glad. You're chosen right again. Despite the hardships. Kept faith in the light. I am proud of you. I truly am. Not everything needs to make sense. And a lot of this game is open to interpretation. But once again... Please think about it all. And always follow your light.
even when it's shrouded in darkness. The light shall shine through. Thanks for playing again. up there. By the way, if you hadn't put it together last time, these are all concept art for the various levels and things that you'll find throughout the game. Including this one down here, which I don't seem to recall actually showing up in-game. Time yet to come. This has been the Hipster Snack. Join me tomorrow one more time as we investigate the depths of the light and the dark for the final time. Thank you.